Richard Ashcroft. Science of Silence on XFM 104.9. I love that. Yes, yeah, correct. He's one of my favourite artists now. I just think, uh, I, he's so, I, I don't know why he's not ballistic. Mm -hmm. He's got everything. He's like one of our best rock stars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Hello there. You're Steve Merchant. I am indeed. Uh, Carl Pilkington over there. Big day today. Really? Yeah, for Carl. He hasn't been looking forward to it. He's been whinging in the week. A couple of things. He thinks he's overworked. He thinks he he thinks he's uh, overworked here and he's stressed and he's got to do DIY. MTV are coming in in right to give him the chance of his li a, a lifetime to do a, just a a little uh, screen test. And he's going, well, I'm not going to look good, am I? They're not going to have a why. He said, well, I've got a round head and I'll be wearing headphones. <laughs> and uh, he's he's not made an effort. He thinks, oh, they'll put them off. He said, they won't even press record. He's got a spot on his head. Uh huh. Uh huh. I mean. You yeah. know, I mean, also Carl, you're not looking forward to it. You're not excited about it. It's a great opportunity. Why is it a great opportunity? Well, to get know. on MTV. No, but it's look money for group, group, isn't it? Yeah, but look what's happened to people like um, Jeremy Speak, whatever his name is, and all Jeremy that. Speak, yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, slightly different, slightly different. Why is it? Well, so you, you're you're making it in the industry, and you've got you've got something to give. He he happened to be around when they were filming an airport. <laughs> yeah, well. Do you see the difference? All right, the other one then, who's on a boat. <laughs> Jamie Same Donald, thing, although at least she had a well. skill. She had a skill, you know. She she can sing, you know. Well, it's just, it's just I, d I, d I think it can all go wrong. Do you know what I mean? Well, of course it can. So can sitting in your little room moaning about nothing happening in the world. You know, he, he wanted to stop educating Ricky because nothing had happened. He said, he said, look what happened last week. I scoured the net. He said all I found was a dog in a car wash and a parrot and a vicar. Uh -huh. right? I'll tell you what, there ain't much more going on this week. We are talking sh well, listen, me and Steve, yesterday, we took a day off to prove you wrong and we've come up with two of the most incredible things I told you about and they're amazing. <laughs> so there are things out there or is it just, ju but just go for truth. Go for truth and science yeah, yeah, and discovery. Do, do. Don't, don't, yeah. the, the yeah. fact is, is strange than fiction. You don't have to revert to oh, sort of yeah, like yeah. God and ghosts. I know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the funny thing is, you know, like, Last couple of weeks I've been saying there's not much going on. Yeah. I found out when I was looking that there was a day in 1930, right? It was right. a Good Friday. There was no news. There was nothing going on. They had to put a music video on or something on the telly because <laughs> there was nothing going on. <laughs> play a record. We're going to play some classic tracks today. This is uh, Debaser. Pixies, Debaser. I was looking forward to playing that. Came and said, Carl, I'll play that. I was looking. Uh, he put it on. Uh, Lauren just called through and said, we played that in the last half hour. Embarrassing. Oh uh, yeah. So, it's what really is the point of having a producer if he doesn't look, check things out? So, I mean, it's a good track. I mean, I'm sorry if you heard that twice right. in the last hour. Go on, so go what on, go on, on, listen, to, listen to everything all the time. I've been running around. I get in early on a Saturday. You got in about the same time as me. I, I went out and bought you some biscuits, so you're <laughs> happy. I put the coffee on. Yeah. I've sorted what prizes we're gonna give away. I've been running to the library getting you certain tracks. Yeah. I can't listen all the time. I'm doing my best. Oh, I'm not sure it's good enough. <laughs> I mean, I'm worried when MTV come in, if they've heard this kind of shoddy production, they're gonna start to well, wonder MTV what you're playing uh, the same songs every five yeah, minutes Yeah, no, anyway. it's, sorry, are you sort of overworked because you were on Zoe Ball show talking? Oh, hello, what's going on here? Well, I was, I I was he, in the- He was no, exclusively was the, uh, on our show. No, I was in I the seem, car. I seem to remember, Rick, he was- he was a nobody- Yeah. That got a chance to come on air and talk about that. And so guess now what he was getting auditions guess with what, MTV? Guess what he was talking about on Zoe's show? Oh, hello. All the jellyfish stuff and all that about Can't getting stuff. believe it. Recycling material that you've done on this show. I phoned in. I phoned in, right, and I went, stop doing materials. I was boy. He just hung up on me. But well, I had a job to do. Who do you think you are? Your Look, ego has just gone through the room. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. What? I had a job to do in the week. They asked me to drive the desk for Zoe, right? They didn't Zoe, say talk. Zoe, if yes. she talks to you, you don't- you can't just ignore her. Yes, you can. Oh, you Who can't. is she? <laughs> right, Who well. does she think she is? <laughs> <laughs> you made a promise to us, a pact, that you were our kind of- yeah. Monkey. Yeah. What, what can I, I do <laughs> if someone takes time off? I've got to do it. It's my job. Yeah, but you don't it's have to talk. You don't have to use- you're the head of production. We've given you this special gig. This is like taking you out weekends. Yeah, and exactly. The, you know, if we find out you're getting too much excitement in the week, we'll have to just calm it down. Yeah. Get another little- Well, that's it now, anyway. It was only last week. <laughs> I, I, I do you know, I feel like kind of solid. I feel betrayed. It's like you were having an affair behind our back. Yeah. And you rumbled it. He was doing all the stuff. He was doing all this like, oh yeah, jellyfish and this, jellyfish Yeah, because that. she was asking. And I thought it was a good way of promoting this show, actually. Oh, oh did you mention this show? Yeah, I did at some point. <laughs> did you? What did you say? I just said, uh, more about that on Saturday afternoons. So you talk twice? I only heard you talk once. So you're talking all the time? Well, about five times in the week. <laughs> in the full week. Five times. Theory. Right? 
and one- it was just stuff- You could never be a monk, could ya? Chatting away all the um, time. Right, what have we got? I play ball as well, to be honest. <laughs> I feel ball's slightly responsible for it. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. She well. can't find her own, you know, gibbon to get on the show. <laughs> yeah. She can't find her own kind of, you know, loser, then <laughs> don't start stealing ours. <laughs> right. Well, coming up. Right, yeah. Maybe all... we'll get Fat Boy Slim in. Indeed. Next. Yeah. Saturday, if you're listening, um, Slim, yeah. come in on the show. What's his name? Ernie or something? <laughs> What's Ernie? his name? Norman. Norman. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Ernie! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, know. that's great, Ernie Ball. Yeah. Oh, he, Ernie, he wouldn't change Ernie his name. Ernie <laughs> Cook, that's it, yeah. Right. That's yeah. great. Anyway, Go coming on. up today, uh, we have got Educating Ricky. Mm, right, yeah. okay. Is this the Couple. last one? You've promised it might be. Um, I believe there's a book out that might help me with this feature, okay. so we'll see how it goes. We might- I was thinking of new features in the week. I've got, um, <coughs> what did they come up with? I wanted to do Celebrity Fact Club. <laughs> celebrity Fact Club, alright. That's, uh, I've just got to get some celebrities in first. Okay. Before we can kick that off, so maybe in the new year. Oh, Ball and maybe Cook. Maybe Zoe Ball, yeah. Ball yeah, and Cook, yeah, start yeah, off. Maybe, right. And I've also got, um Cook and Ball stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Good one. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you could sell that to Zoe show. <laughs> ah! And, um I'm also thinking <laughs> through the Ricky hole. Through the Ricky hole, okay. Yeah, What's yeah, that? That's, uh I'm quite- No, you just got so the title again, haven't you? Yeah. 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 Okay, play record. So, uh, Rockbuster's <laughs> yeah. coming up as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Ha. Wu-Tang Clan, Gravel Pit on XFM 104.9. We're playing some great music today. Yeah, I wonder if we should maybe, uh, you know, it's getting towards Christmas to yeah. think about others. Should we dedicate the show to all the people in the world who maybe are less privileged and less, uh, fortunate than us? No. No? Um, okay. Have you- uh, to do the prizes for the, uh- Prizes? <laughs> okay. Alright, so screw those <laughs> who are less fortunate, is what TV's Ricky Gervais <laughs> thinks. Um, Rick, I know you're a big fan, uh, of the likes of Brian Adams, <laughs> Robert Palmer, <laughs> uh, Alien Ant Farm, and, uh, obviously, uh, um, ZZ Top. Yeah. And so you'll be enjoying the best air guitar album in the world Brilliant. ever, volume two. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Well, volume one <laughs> wasn't enough. There wasn't no. enough. No, exactly. <laughs> um, again, <coughs> we've seemed to be able to give one of these away every <coughs> week. Are you just not sending these out? I mean, these are the same prizes we started this game with, I think, a couple of weeks back. Are you just not sending the prizes out? Yeah, but I want to give, like, more people a chance, because if, if one week they listen in and think, God, I wouldn't mind winning that. Sure. If you if you've got more copies of it, they'll go. Well, I'll listen next week. Okay. Yeah. 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 So again, this is uh, one of those um, the best songs you've heard on an advert ever. Albums. Ma mainly mobile phones. Mainly mobile phone adverts. Yeah. yeah. Although there is the uh, Smash Mouth <laughs> one, which is used in the Ford Fiesta TV. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Walking on the sun. Or something. I forget what it is. Um, uh, the Smashing Pumpkins album that we've given away in the past again. Yeah. I've got a bulk order of those that can't shift them. Um, Wild Weather. I don't know who's interested in this. This what, is, is, a, is that a double box set VHS of different weather? <laughs> uh, that's be, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, there's that uh, is two amazing. cassette tapes there. It's presented by uh, Donald McIntyre. It's a thrilling trip with the most e exciting forces of our wild and turbulent world. So, so I'm right in saying it's, it's, it's a double VHS like video set of, of different weather. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah, no, it's got, I mean, it includes the fastest winds, yeah. the oh, hottest desert, joking. um, and the biggest rain machine on the planet. That's oh, on there, I think you have to. Oh, God. I, I wonder if they're, I hope they're bringing out another box set, Soil. Yeah, absolutely. Just goes through different mud. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and this you may be of interest. I've read good reviews of the, uh, the DVD of this. It's, uh, a two disc set. Uh, The Wicker Man, oh the classic right. 70s film, film, but yeah. uh, it's got a bunch of extras that in there. So that, quite that's actually worth having. I would probably throw the rest away. But the, the Wicker Man, get the bit on DVD Christmas. and it's, yeah, it's a quite, very interesting. Yeah, but you'll enjoy that. So, so uh, what, what, what this is Rockbusters, is it? Yeah, oh, that's for Rockbusters. Brilliant. Well, let's do, let's let, I say get the ball rolling now. What, of Rockbusters? Yeah, get the ball rolling. I don't know, I mean, tease them, Rick. Don't, you know, don't, cause, you know, don't sort of spunk all the good stuff early on. I mean, well, that's dynamite. You can, you can say spunk, I can't. <laughs> well, on, well, we've got, um, actually it's quite good moving it about, cause we might have some new listeners here. Yeah. And I wouldn't have so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Not after last week. No. Um, <laughs> right, okay, so if you haven't heard it before, I'll give you some initials. It work, you know, it's like initials of an artist or of a it's band. It's Blockbusters. And, and a cryptic clue to who the band is. There's two easy ones, one difficult one. <laughs> uh, first one is, um, that'll never get off the ground. Right. Yeah. That'll never get off the ground? The That'll initial? never get off the ground is the clue. Not LZ. The initials are LZ. You are joking. <laughs> Two easy ones. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right, and then you've got, um, that woman's got her husband's gloves and a pair of her own. <laughs> <laughs> right. Say it again. 
That woman has got a pair of her husband's gloves and she's got a pair of her own. That's H-H, right? It's a bit of a difficult one. And then the, uh, the last one, you'll get a lo uh, you'll get a right load of bacon off them, right? You'll get what? A right load of bacon off them. Uh-huh. Um, that's L. L. Yeah, so, uh, once you'll again, You'll get a right quickly, load of bacon off of them. You'll get- you'll get a right load of bacon off them. Uh -huh. So, first one, that'll never get off the ground, LZ. Uh, that woman has got her husband's gloves and she's got a pair of her own. That's H-H. Yeah. Brilliant. And, uh, you'll get a right load of bacon off them. That's L. And so it's an email only competition. Email only, uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and we pick a winner before the end. So. And the winner, 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 wicker man. The weather. Best video. of the weather, weather. <laughs> the best of the weather. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> the best of the weather. As a compilation, Channel yeah, 4. Exactly. The no, winds we... like to vary. Uh, I, 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 I love 1976 weather. this one from August 1979. Oh, warm, isn't it? <laughs> oh, this is warm, isn't it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the best of the weather. I'll tell you what. You remember how we always play, like, great music, mm. usually? Mm, mm, mm. I'm up you're in not it. You've not got another one, have you? You're yeah, I'm gonna do, do it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is David Bowie driving Saturday. Oh, yeah, you've done it again. <laughs> What? I'm uh, doing, I, I'm the same problem. I know, beating a biscuit. Yeah. Uh, David Bowie driving Saturday. Mm. That's a great track, isn't mm. it? A crash course for the ravers, eh? That's what this show is, isn't it, Carl? Crash course for the ravers. They tune and they go, mm. wow, that's, that's so cool. I wish I was like Carl Pilkington. You reckon? Yeah, definitely. You forgot to uh, read your mum's clues out, didn't you? Yeah, These she's- These are just uh, for fun only. This is Carl's mum. She, uh, she listened one week and now she sends him a little example she's of, uh, helped. rockbusters every week. She's got, um, what did she send? Um, this group would go well with your Christmas dinner. <laughs> Cranberries? Yeah. Um, they make a few good cupboards. They what? make a few good cupboards? Yeah. The carpenters. 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 I was thinking of EMF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? I was thinking B and Q. The B and Qs. Uh, this group thinks of lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> this group thinks of lots of things. Yeah. Uh, go on. Imagination. <laughs> uh, I think they're the best ones. Yeah, they're, well, they're, 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 they're the best ones. Well, they're obviously you want the worst ones then. Uh, here's one more. Uh, she'd really like Blackpool. She'd really like Blackpool. She'd really Run. like Blackpool. Fairground attraction. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Right, so, uh, there's, uh, uh... Does she write anything else in the letter? Or does she just send them, like, <laughs> on a scrawled on the back of, you know, I don't know, a till receipt? She did it with the first Quick one, thing. now it's just, just the rockbusters. Right. So, <laughs> really? She doesn't bother asking how you are, or... Well, I'll speak to her in the week. Right. On the phone, so yeah. Yeah. What kind of conversations would you have, then, with your What are you saying? Stuff? Do you moan about how overworked you are and stuff to her? Uh, they just, I mean, they're always surprised when I'm getting in late and that. It's like, you know, what have you done today? Oh, I've just got in from work and it's like half past eight at night. A lot of people get home at half eight, Carl. Next. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> just saying how's the flat going? I was yeah. asking my dad some DIY tips the other day. Mm. Um, you know, the usual sort of stuff mm. we talk with your mum and dad, mm. really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. talking about the bisons with them. I was with watching, uh, did you watch the mammals in the week? No, I missed David it. Attenborough? No. I was thinking, actually, right, all this MTV stuff, if there's one reason why I'd like to do it, yeah. is I was watching Attenborough, the, the Mammals program, I reckon I could do something like that. Right. Right. And just have, have like me, <laughs> instead of Attenborough, like a, you know, a young, sort of fresh person. Yeah. Uh, watching, like, um, certain animals and saying, do we need these? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what right. I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's going to death on earth? Well, that's, that's amazing! Yeah. Do we need these? No, because no, there's And the audience at home would vote, <laughs> would there be some kind of telephone yeah, like vote? vote out system. Oh, yeah, the that. thing is, is yeah. like, I, it's something interesting that Amber was saying the other night <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> Do we need these? On Jonathan Ross's show, on his telly show, right, he was saying, uh, he said, you could take all the humans off the earth and it would carry on. But take, like, some animals off it, mammals and that. You got problems on your hands. Mm. I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah. So it's like the question is, do we need these? Is that part of the big thing? Right. Like jellyfish. Yeah. We've talked about jellyfish. Yeah. Yeah. So which mammals in particular were you, you talked about? Like the Bull Show, haven't you? Hey. Eh? Which mammals uh, were you thinking we don't need when you watched the show the other night? 
Um. Any in particular that you thought they don't need them? They're not of interest. Well, I like I like whales, but I don't know what they do. Uh, uh, <laughs> and okay. they're, they're taking up quite a lot of room. Sure. Um, <laughs> but stuff like, quite a lot of room. Yeah. but like um, jellyfish, <laughs> I looked into because. Yeah, you know, well, I was I talking you about them, yeah. and um, they were saying they've got no eyes, no art, <laughs> uh, they're something like 97% water. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're blind, and they do about 33 miles a day. Right. So it's like, <laughs> do we need them? Could Pointless. we clear them out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, a big net. That would, that would be the, like, the program. What, what, right, we'll get rid of them. Uh, next week we'll be looking at, uh, my nose. <laughs> I think it's like genius. That, yeah. Honestly, I think it's genius. And like going along, sort of like picking up sea enemies and going and just lobbing them into the sea. Well, what do you think about MTV doing that? And then I, I just in between the bits, play music I play music that related relate to, to fish. It. So I could play like fish. Yeah. Like rock guy, or uh, the rock, animals. Rock lobster. Yeah. Or uh, yeah. what else? Could this could run there? and run. What, what other songs have got animals in them? The well, monkeys could play the monkeys. Yeah, there's about a million, so let's not start this. No, yeah. but do you know yeah. what I mean? So, 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 but so, do we need this? So MTV Carver. flies you around the world and to the most incredible exotic locations. <laughs> you sort of climb up a tree or whatever next to I don't know what lives up a tree, some kind of rare parrot. <laughs> you say, sloth. look at that, it's colourful, sloth. it's interesting. Oh, you like sloths, don't you? No, they just live up trees, but I'd say, do we need them? Mm. Why? Well, what do they do? What do you mean? What do they do? What do you want from an animal? Carpentry. What well, do like, you want? I don't. I don't like scorpions, right? Right. But then I found out they look after those uh, those monkey things. They're not are, monkeys. They're whatever. lizards. Well, all right. Yeah. Then lizards. They look after the lizards. <laughs> they look so yeah. there's a reason. But, but do you need the lizard? Could be well, your next yeah, question. Because the local people made shoes out of them. But not when the scorpion protected them. They didn't. All right. We don't need them then. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And so ultimately, you, would anyone decide? I mean, do the animals kind of get a chance to mount a case for their survival? I mean, is there maybe someone that comes into their yeah, corner yeah, and no, defends I'd them? I'd have like a David Attenborough type character who says, right. "Well, they do this," and I go, "Yeah, but do we need that doing?" Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And so, what what does an animal need to do in order for you to feel that it sort of gets a chance of life? I mean, like a pet, like an animal, like a dog, maybe or a cat. I mean, they give a certain affection to its owner. Is that a valid uh, reason to survive? Not uh, particularly. Yeah. Not really. No, okay. I've been saying that though. Blind people use dogs, so they are useful. So dogs are useful. Farmers Farmers use they dogs. Often save people, don't they, in yeah. snowy weather? Cats. I'd have to think about it. Okay. Keep the mice down. Yeah, but yeah. you got rent to kill. Okay. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is something that will affect the world. Right. I think you'll find everything does. I think you'll find everything does. Mm. Except Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what effect he's having on the world. I tell you what, though, Steve. Right? Did you watch the mammals? I didn't see the mammals. They had uh, they had bison on it. Right. The weirdest looking things you've ever seen. Yeah. They've mm. really again. Got you're on dangerous ground here, Carl. They've really got a. <laughs> it's like decide what you want to look like. Okay. <laughs> it's just a mismatch of stuff. It's got a really big area head. Yeah. Um. And like you, sort of bald at the back. Right. <laughs> Uh, sort of it's like someone you went to school with. <laughs> <laughs> Was there two of them? <laughs> oh, brilliant! <laughs> from the album Original Pirate Material, it's obviously The Streets and uh, an album track from that. It's too late. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. I know everyone's raving about it being, you know, one of the albums of the year, but it, it is, I think. It's great. Yeah. That's brilliant. Mm. I love, love the backing as well. Mm. It's just so good. The, the, the lyrics, the things you go, I don't, oh, they're my favourite band of the year. Um, next week then. We'll do all our favourite songs of the year, shall we? No, I think it's got to be two weeks' time, hasn't Oh, it? two weeks, is it? Yeah, we'll do I'm the away Christmas. next week as well. What do you mean you're away next week? What are you doing? Zoe Ball Show? I'm going, going up north again. Why? So Claire's gonna be here with you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. at least she- What are you doing up north? She does her job. Just, uh, Suzanne's dad's birthday, uh, so. Yeah. I bet he's a party animal. I bet I've heard that they really kick off, don't they? Is it, yeah? yeah when? Uh, so you gonna be raving? Can't concentrate now. Oh, and he's all stressed because the lady from MTV is here. She's going to film his little face. So the what? Thing, the things he said in the week. He was so worried. He's got worried about the spot on his head. That won't come out. Just that. So you got your What's best side. on that side. That's all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. The, the camera's out. Look, he's getting nervous now. Okay, Carl. Ignore the camera. Okay. Just ignore <laughs> the camera. Okay. Now, me and Steve have done our research for you, and we've got two amazing things to tell you. Uh, what should I tell him first? About the baby or the? 
Well, the they're craft. both equally fascinating, so you, you choose. Um, I'll tell you the crab thing first, right? Um, we, uh, Steve actually saw this thing in the Guardian of the Week, uh, about our research thing, and then we looked it up, we looked into it on Friday, and it is incredible. Right, listen to this. There's a, a thing in, um, um, in a bay in, um, uh, New England, right, where it's, it's like the biggest, um, uh, they make silicon chips and stuff for computers, right? And because of the data protection thing, after they've d done them, because uh, they have to destroy the plates, right, well the information's sort of put onto them, but there's still flakes of silicon, they sort of grind it down straight away, and some of the flakes got into the bay, okay, but some of the information's still on the, even the slight granules of silicon, anyway, gets in the water, and silicon is rather like, um, a, a carbon derivative. They reckon if there had been life on another planet that wasn't carbon based, it'd be silicon based. Because mm -hmm. that's simple sugars and protein, it's just COH and that, and it can work with silicon, right? Anyway, the crabs have been taken up, it's down in the water, and they, they looked out on the beach, and, uh, over years the crabs have started, um, sort of putting themselves in formations, like geometric form, and they couldn't work out why they were doing this. And, uh, when they, put them in the experiment, they sort of like chopped them up, and they found they'd taken on silicon. And it had sort of got into their brain, and they were downloading information. They actually, they picked up little things, because it's just chemical, um, you know, like, uh, electrical impulses had got information off the silicon chip, and they were interfacing it. But, this is the amazing thing, one bloke sort of thought of this, and he thought, well, if, if it's a simple computer, the brain, if it's just a simple sort of electrical thing, then maybe there's, there's sort of, uh, you know, we could, we could get it down. So wh what they did is they made a thing called a bio-interface, and they d put it into the crab's brain, just a really simple brain, so it's measured on Vangar, right, and it got impulses from it, and they were getting, like, computer, really, that's just flashes of, like, symbols and geometric things, right, on this screen to read the crab's brain, and it was stuff like, you know, fragments of a, um, what, what made them do this in the first place? Because they saw the, they saw the crabs behaving differently. They were behaving differently to each other. They were just like, they were, you know, intelligent. And they were sort of solving problems and all this sort of stuff. Anyway, when they downloaded the, the thing, it was like a, there was, um, uh, they found us, they were so fast, they found a, one of the secretary's names where it had been on the silicon chip, where it was just a, like a flash of a computer screen. <coughs> but the most amazing thing is, they downloaded a memory, right, it was like a, like a snapshot where it had been burnt onto the retina of the crab, just a snapshot or something, and it was like a picture of the beach, like a couple of years ago, right? And they also did, uh, d uh, incredible, it was like a, just a, a digital black and white sort of thing, so they could see what the crab had seen. Amazing. Jeez. Amazing. So Intelligent what, what, crabs. What, what are they doing Almost with them like now then? Well they think, this is the, this is the upshot, they think they could use it as spy crabs, cause they could put these, get these crabs. Also, the other thing is, as generations went on, right, so they put a crab in the, the sea or something, right, uh, lots of crabs in, and then as generations went on, a, a newborn crab, they downloaded the memory and it had the memories of it's great, 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 all together. It had every memory that any crab had been related to it beforehand. Because it passed it on, it just passed it on. So not even ones that had been eating the, the silicon stuff? Yeah. No, that these, they- These are just like ones that have had kids. Yeah. yeah. And they've got like- And they know every, so you'd know everything your great, great, everything right the way back. So would that work if, if we ate silicon? Well, I suppose so. So what are they gonna- well, they yeah, can yeah. use them for all sorts of things, though. I mean, that's that's what's incredible. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how you train it particularly. I don't know; it'd be quite tricky to train. But I'm assuming they could, if they can, if they can do it that way, then presumably they can it'd give be it like certain load silicon information, which yeah. they can then plant in it, if you like, within it, within its sort of food. Also, if you get them onto enemy you'd beaches, it, like, yeah. you'd have like a thousand digital cameras just yeah, well, that, taking they, they, around. They, if you get like you know Osama bin Laden or someone, they just don't, calling they around don't in understand the information they've got. No, they don't. They're doing it. They just download messages. But it's not like you could torture them, and they wouldn't be able to sort of the information because they wouldn't know what the information they had because they're just but like the crab, the crab, the crab, the first crab they downloaded, they just kept seeing the same picture of a big crab feeding it. Was that <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. That's what, like its mother crab or something. Yeah. As just it was memories of it as a child. But they're not in colour, presumably. Because no, it's all in black and white. Black it's and just a digital camera because it's just a, they don't see it in black and white. So it's just like a, it's just like a, I don't know. I think it's, it's I think it's burnt onto the retina or something. And um, the only one that they kept were the ones they saw a lot of the time. 
Well, I mean, in a way, uh, some of the educating Ricky I've got for you today is, is on the similar lines. Right. Uh, oh, you've got to be impressed by that. You've got to no, be impressed no, no, by that. No, no, that's pretty good. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'm interested to see, you know, wh what they do. What with they it. do, what they do with the, what the crab developments are. But yeah, yeah, no, that's that's pr that's pretty good. Yeah. But I mean, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, that just digest just that information because that's not even the most impressive one we found. I think it is. I suppose it's pretty impressive, but the next one's more, maybe more shocking. Okay, right. But let's play a tune, and, and Ricky's got another extraordinary okay. one. Okay. Oh. Pure love song, classic on XFM. So that's the that's the crabs that can you can download their memories. But, um, but what about other animals that are in the sea, in that same sea, eating the stuff? Have they tested them yet? I don't know. I think it, they just took it on because their um, biology, uh, so much to do with. I presume they could take up minerals and you know I don't know why. I don't know. But anyway, um, next one. Uh, this is just on horizons. Um, uh, a bodybuilder. Yeah. Um, uh, this married, is freaky. Had another bodybuilder, married another bodybuilder, yeah. right? And they were pregnant. And um, they had these tests, and the baby was very large, but it was causing it pain, right? In the thing, right? And it, after this, it is, is extreme. This it's is, almost bizarre, and like yeah. After the wo the the female woke up pregnant after seven months, and the baby was had, walking around. No, it forced its way out of the vagina. Oh no way! Yeah, it forced its way out, it, and it, it was because it, it like almost off. had like super strength, like and it was pulling her along by the umbilical cord, and that, uh, and it was, it was, it was a stone. <laughs> Extraordinary. That now that's freaky. I mean, you talk about yeah. freaky stuff. That's made up. <laughs> what? It wasn't pulling her along. It yeah, was. well, no, it was pretty. She could yeah. feel it exactly. And it was. Do you know what I mean? Like just went. <laughs> And just sort of squeezed it. Just got in. out because it was it's ready. Because all the hormones. Because it thought stuff. it was ready. Oh god! Imagine that. Just waking up and finding that in the bottom of the bed. Freak out, wouldn't it? Because you think it was a nightmare initially. And it had hair and everything, didn't it? Yeah, because all the hair. hormones there. Like so hair 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 there was something in the week about um, you know you've got test tube babies and that now, haven't you? Mm. But they've they've managed to do it. I only caught. Half I knew he'd be more impressed by the crabs than that. He doesn't care if it's no, no, no. Even. I am. I'm but telling you. I'm telling you though on. that um, there was something. I only caught after story because it was busy. But uh, there's something about babies being able to be born without having any people involved. Or something. It's like putting them in an oven or something, and it's like a cake. <laughs> and after a certain amount of time, it's ready. <laughs> I think I you can buy that. those in Argos for kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, it's my first baby kit. Yeah. 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 It's Play Doh, I think, that they can buy. Yeah. Well, so what do you think of that then? The baby one. Yeah. I, I prefer the crab one. Yeah. But the baby, I mean the baby thing's pretty, pretty horrible. Yeah. yeah. So it was bigger than the, than, like the average. But, um, yeah. Um, both made up, we made those up. Yeah, both, they're both rubbish. They're both I mean bullshit. they are both rubbish. Despite the fact they're both rubbish. Yeah. They're interesting. We made those up. Both those stupid stories up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine downloading a crab's memories and seeing its mum feeding it as a child. <laughs> Both uh, are rubbish. I had trouble. I had trouble. Yeah. I know I was gonna have trouble with um, pushed its way out of the vagina. <laughs> yeah, I practiced that about thirty times yesterday with Stephen. I was going, I'm not gonna be able to do it, mate. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to say that. Yeah, <laughs> are you disappointed? A little bit. I, I mean, the baby one's a bit <laughs> sort of out there. Yeah, I wasn't really having having that one. No, but, the, but the crab one. Mm. I, um, See, now, what's interesting, I think, is it's a useful experiment, Carl. <laughs> I don't know what it's taught you about yourself, <laughs> but would you say that that's revealed to you a certain thing? I don't know, maybe, that you're a bit gullible. I mean, you know, what I'm saying is maybe you shouldn't accept or swallow ho your hook, line and sinker everything you read on the web. <laughs> You don't think maybe a valuable lesson? I here? feel bad because I, I feel, I said to Steve, he won't be annoyed that we conned him, he'd be annoyed that they're actually not true. You'd love that crab thing to be true, wouldn't you? It wouldn't surprise me if it did happen one day. Sure. Yeah. So, and then he'd slap it. And it's uh, in the break when I said about the crabs, you know, well, I'm keeping them then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, well, I, d I know what you're getting at <laughs> with the, uh, with the educating Ricky, but, you know. Let's see, let's see. You've got, uh, three titles. Yeah. Uh, that I tease you with, different stories, you take your pick and I teach you something, that yeah. did happen. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of venom. Uh, yeah, go on. First one is, um, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet that's bacon related, knowing you. You've got, uh, <laughs> you've got enough is anus. Say that again. Enough is an anus. <laughs> <laughs> enough is enough. Well. But it's changed to enough is an anus. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Right, so you've got, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've also got, <clears throat> will it, will it be a bloke, oh, oh no, will it like a bloke or a woman? <laughs> what? Will it like a bloke or a woman? Will it? Yeah. <laughs> will it like a bloke or a woman? Wow. Yeah, so there you, there you three stories okay. today. Okay, sounds exciting Okay, stuff. well I'll have Woollett, so, Woollett well, like- Well, we're gonna play a record now, Rick, surely. Yeah, yeah and, okay. Uh, and come back with- Sorry uh, about the crowds and the big baby. It's right. It's a very good lesson, really. I think of a title for him. <laughs> yeah, Oasis. <laughs> um, the Hindu Times. Carl just did his little screen test down the lens <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> He went, I said, just look at the camera. He went, right, do you want to know about MTV? So it might be VH1. He went, right. He did rock busters then said, after the break, some Genesis. Oh, <laughs> oh I'd dear. watch it. Oh. You, didn't, you didn't tell me she wanted all this. I thought you said, cos I said, you just bring your own camera in mm. and we'll put it down on some tape and pass that on to her. Yeah. yeah. So now, this, I'm doing two jobs at once again. This is what I'm saying to you in the week. <laughs> I'm juggling jobs all the time. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'll tell I'm, you. Right, come on then. How much do I get? <laughs> <laughs> he looked straight at the camera and said that! Right. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> three stories. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Looking Enough to is a nurse. And, uh, And, uh, we'll have that one then. That one? Yeah. Right, well, um, <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you believe in palm reading and stuff? No. Yes. Sorry, yes. Yep. Yeah, of yeah, course. Sorry, true. I forgot. Yes, of course we do. Mm -hmm. Right, well, there's a fella <coughs> who, um, he, he used to do palm reading. Oh, yeah. But a lot of people, he found that when he went up to him in the street and said, do you want your palm reading? He was like, a lot of them were like, you know, oh, I've, I've you know, I'm a bit ashamed of my nails and stuff because mm. they're a labourer or, or they're a cleaner or mm. something like that. I know a lot of labourers are slightly embarrassed by their nails. <laughs> yeah. No, but. Yeah. That's, so if you look at my bloody hands, Reg. <laughs> Well, that's that hod carrying. <laughs> did I ever tell you that? <laughs> did I ever tell you that I got picked at school to <laughs> make tea and serve biscuits to old people because I've got good nails? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, go on. Go is there on. any more yeah. to the story? Well, that's about it. I mean, be, <laughs> we used to do like I think the head teacher must have been getting something, maybe getting his mam in there for free or something in this old people's home. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so. <laughs> He offered the kids of the school, uh, he said, right, all, all sit at your desk and put your hands on the table. And everyone did. And he walked past me and he said, not bad, not bad. Yeah. And he said, uh, you've got the afternoon off, you can, uh, go and serve biscuits and tea to the old, old people. What did you say? I said, all right then. <coughs> it's was good. that? It's yeah. Good, good afternoon. <laughs> but anyway, was so these- Yeah, these, was, well, what did you do? He just sort of walked around and went, you all right, uh, do you want bourbons or digest? <laughs> I bet you'd get on with old people, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd love to see- maybe Especially the, the senile ones. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! No, but I'd love to see you on VH1, just do a link. They just go, you know, they, they've just played, uh, um, Robert Palmer, right? And it comes to you in a little park, and you just sit next to an old lady and go, all right? And you go, yeah, not too bad. You go, what do you think of London? Crap, innit? And she goes, yeah, it's awful, innit? And you just have a talk, and you go, all right, well, she doesn't like it. In excess. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see. Mm. I still think my idea is better, but mm -hmm. so what are you going for then? Oh, you picked one, haven't you? <laughs> uh, yeah. So this fella. So there's so there's, there's palmists going around the streets. Yeah, he's going round and randomly trying to give palm readings. They're losing, they're losing money, right. hand over fist. Yeah. All right. So um, they said uh, <laughs> he, he's what he's done. He's he's reading people's uh, bottoms now. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> whoa, 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 you just, you just, I didn't quite follow that. He was a palm reader, that wasn't making money, so now he's going up to people in the street and saying, can I see your arse? Basically, yeah. So from, from, from being a palmist to an arsonist? Well, uh, they just, that's, that's what he does. He said the same sort of lines and that, that you get on your hand, you get them on your, on your bottom, <laughs> and, uh, he can read them. Right. Yeah, he's not a pervert or anything, or making up as he goes along. No, that's that's it. That was that. So, if, sorry, if a man <laughs> came up to you in the street and said, "Can I have a look at your arse?" <laughs> Can I read your arse? You you drop your trousers, would you? <laughs> no, no, no. If he went up to him and they said, oh, "I'd rather you didn't," because I'm a labourer. I've got bad fingernails. No, that's why I've seen. That's what the a lot of labourers they're showing their cleavage. You think, but actually they're having their arse read. <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. what a lot of. That's what it is. And then, right? So, you know, is that the end of the story? <laughs> yeah. 
But then because- That's it. Educating Ricky is there's a bloke <laughs> who reads arses. No, but You're then, a mentalist. But no, but What then, are you talking about? But then, do you know, like, now and again I come up with a little jokey line. Thought yeah. I'd make an effort today for VH1 or MTV. Yeah. yeah. Little line there. Um, <laughs> don't worry, it won't last. It might just be a splash in the pan. Okay. Phil Collins next. <laughs> yes, <laughs> play, let's play some Phil. <laughs> let's play some Phil. <laughs> oh. Oh, this is the best show. I mean, off air, obviously. I'm sure people at home aren't enjoying it as much as we are, but Carl uh, is continuing his, uh, what do they call this? A screen test. Mm. Yeah, that was, uh, let down by Radiohead. Carl, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? I what just you think, think it's, it's not right, really, is it? I'm trying to do a job. Yeah. Whilst trying to get another job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mean? but well, a lot of your presenters are on MTV now. Yeah, but- They, they, they all of them have got Zane in their name, but, you know. Yeah, it's not- it's not really right, is it? Go on. But, right, so, uh, You we better get that out of here. Carl Zane Pilkington. Educating Ricky, will we carry on? Yeah. Right, you've got left. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. will it like fellas or will it like women? Well, you said wool before. Yeah, wool it. Go on then, I've wool it. Right, now this is similar to the one you were talking about before, right? They found out- <laughs> that, um, <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah. scientists, scientists, <laughs> oh, yeah. have found out- 17th century? That, um, like now, uh, one in ten rams are gay. One in ten rams are gay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so that was like, wool it, that's how I could get that in. Um, <laughs> they got a load of gay and straight rams. Right. Right. <laughs> um, they worked out which were which first. They said, right, that's- that bunch there is a- is a gay bunch. They looked better, they just had more pride in their appearance. And, uh, yeah. and the other ones, you know, the straight ones, and then they gave them to this scientist and said, right, go on, do what you gotta do. And they took the brains out of, <laughs> of all of them. Just to check. And, um, they did tests on the brain and it worked out that they've got something smaller in the brain. The gay ones have got something in the brain that makes it smaller. And they said, right, well, that's probably how it's gonna work on- on males. On- on like, males and females and like, humans. So you took from this that gays have smaller brains than straight people? No, there's something in the brain. Right, so if, go on. So if someone's saying, you know, oh, I'm a gay, or they they're not sure or whatever, they will now be able to find out. <laughs> so you can go to the doctor and- <laughs> to find out if you're straight or gay. C c is there any gay in my brain? Let's have a look. Do 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 do. You've got a little bit of a gay in you, yes. A little bit of a gay in there. Yes, you've got the uh, you've well, got a, you've got else? a little bent cell there. Well, that's that's why they did it anyway. I don't understand how they how they could differentiate which were straight and which were gay to begin with, before they then gave it to the scientist. Wasn't that what the <laughs> scientist figured out? <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's, how could they tell? Were there's they one theory that it's the genetically pill? determined. There <laughs> is one. <laughs> there is there is there is a theory that's genetically determined, but I I, I don't think it's as easy as um uh, pulling a sheep's brain apart and finding a little pink sort of like blob in there going, right, we've taken the guy out, now he's gonna go and shag some ewes. I don't think it's that straightforward. Although, uh, uh, homosexuality does occur at uh, a similar sort of rate in animals, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So… You knew that, didn't you? So that's, that's that one. I mean… <laughs> I just like the idea of the farmer figuring out which is straight and gay. Well, yeah. that one's wearing quite a camp-looking neckerchief. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So I'm thinking maybe yeah. he's gay. Is that- yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the fact they can- uh, okay, uh, that, that was- <laughs> that was a big fan of Sophie Ellis Baxter. <laughs> yeah, so... yeah, yeah. They were done. they put on ABBA and see which ones dance. <laughs> That's yeah. how they- Which one- yeah. Well, what, yeah. Put on, like, Barbara <laughs> Streisand and see which ones sing along. <laughs> That's it is rubbish. What did I find out? Did, did, did you just say that is rubbish? No, I found out other other stuff in the week that didn't make the top three. Wow. Wow. Uh, we haven't even had the- This no. must be mediocre stuff then. This must be really bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, or it, it might be dubious. Go on. There's um there's a woman in Ireland yeah. who has been with a fella for eleven years. Yeah. Um she always saying to him, you know, oh, when 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 are we gonna get married and that? And he's like, Oh, we don't need to. Uh, you know, we're happy and that. Do you know, like I am with Suzanne, it's like, there's no point, really. Yeah, Unless you married. have a kid, I don't think you need to, do you? Right. So, um, he was like, we'll do it in time, in time and all that. Anyway, he comes home from work one day, he says, oh, go on then, we'll get married. She was so shocked, her hair fell out. <laughs> 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 oh. Did you get that? Wow. So. That's extraordinary. <laughs> and what did he say? Oh, I'm not marrying you, Baldy. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, she was so she was so fell. shocked her hair fell out. Yeah. I love the idea of it just going yeah, to it the just ground. Fell out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, what else? That right, that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That's that rubbish. That's rubbish. Next. You've also got, um... What's it's weird, isn't it, Rick, that the stories <laughs> that we made up are more plausible <laughs> yeah. than the facts yeah. he's actually getting. Yeah, I think us. we tried too hard. <laughs> I think we tried yeah, too hard. Yeah, that's what he's willing to believe. He's willing to believe <laughs> that a woman's hair fell out when her husband came out and said, let's get married then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you old romantic. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, then, here's a good one. Go on, then. Right, in Dubai, this woman went to Dubai for her holiday. Mm. And, um, <laughs> she was over there, and apparently in the markets- Bit of spider? They, they sell lizards. Oh, go on. Right, just like for people to buy. Mm. So mm. she buys one, mm. not knowing that you're not really meant to take him out of the country. Sure. Um, puts it in a bag. Yeah. Uh, As you do. What have you. And, um, then she gets to the airport when she's going home, she's thinking, I can't really leave it in my bag. Yeah. So she puts it on her head. On her head? Wears it as a hat. <laughs> she wore the lizard as a hat? Yeah. Um, <coughs> people on the plane were just like, yeah, everything's fine, you know, they're doing the cross checks and that. Yeah. Have you got your seatbelt on? Yeah. There's a woman great. there with a the lizard hat. Um, everything's going well. She gets off the plane at Manchester Airport. Um, lizard sticks its tongue out. Yeah. The air hostess says, what are you doing with that? She goes, I've had it. I've had it. Lizard said, I just found her in Dubai. <laughs> the, uh, they said, I've had this with me all, all journey, and they said, well, you shouldn't have done, and they took it off her. Yeah, I think that is true, actually. Yeah? Yeah. So what about that? Yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That educated me. <laughs> right, what, any more? Well, what's that taught you? That's taught you, you know, be careful when smuggling <laughs> lizards yeah. back as some kind of hat. Yeah, don't, just say, lizard, keep your tongue in, you <laughs> <Exactly>. twat. <laughs> Not <laughs> at the customs officer! <laughs> yeah. And, uh, what else have Anyone, anyone didn't quite make it? <laughs> Anything we, to declare. We've, oh! <laughs> I've, got, I've got a lizard on my head. <laughs> we've got an old saying, one if you want that. Go on then. Are yeah. these ones, sorry, are these ones that d didn't make the list? These are ones that didn't make it. Oh, yeah. right. Because okay. I always, I always get more in than, than I need to, just in case. Just think if someone's just tuned in now. Mm. Is Anders listening? Is, uh, well, I'll tell you, Dickie Anderson. I've got, a, I've got an email from Richard Anderson, uh, Dickie Anderson. Go on. Uh, the Dick Machine, which. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Dick. The Big Dick, which. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, this is interesting. It's, I mean, I think we're wearing him down. Ricky, I think your show might be improving. Go on. That sense of despair and loneliness I normally feel when listening to your show doesn't seem so bad today. He's desensitized to it. Yeah, exactly. Always giving up. Always <laughs> just giving up. Yeah. 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 I mean, you listen to this long enough and your standards will drop. Let's That's play a tune. Let's come back with some more Carl's, uh, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to use the word facts. No, <laughs> it's not, it's not, yeah. it's wanna, uh, he's got more screen testing now. The camera's ready for you. Yeah. Feeder. Yeah. Just the wrong feeder. That's my favourite feeder track ever. <laughs> uh, it's, it's bugging me. It's just like, um, a ride track from about ten or fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. So if, if you know, put me up my misery. Email in. It's just like a ride track from about 1990, and I can't. It's just the beginning. Uh huh. Drive me mental. Ricky Dotravez at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Well, uh, half hour to go. You've yeah. done your screen test. Yeah. Reluctantly. Well. I think you. I think you had just such the wrong attitude. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? If I've told you before, if things are meant to be, right, they'll happen. That's yeah. how I've got through my life, right? I'm 29 now. Yeah. Never 30, ain't you? Well, yeah, 30. But the camera's still on. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and everything I've done in my life, I've never sort of planned it. Do you know Is that I mean? how you storm through your uh, your exams? Well, look, <laughs> your look, at, look at the <laughs> look at the school play doing little donkey. I yeah. wasn't planning that day sure. to do the drums. It just on the night I couldn't help myself. And you stole the show. What happened? When, what do you mean? When when you know when all the kids were playing little donkey, I wasn't meant to be doing my drum set in that track. I was only meant to. I think I was doing We Three Kings or something. Uh -huh. But when they started doing it, the <laughs> tune I couldn't help myself with the drumstick, just like tapping away. Right at the at the drum. Yeah. And then when it came on, I was like, oh, and I started doing it and like the teacher looked at, uh, looked over at me and I was like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. But she sort of gave me the nod as if to say, it's alright, carry on, it's, it's sounding good. <laughs> then after it she went, you know, they love that, you can do that again tomorrow night. Yeah. So I got like an extra, extra part in the play and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That wasn't So planned. you were, so, so you were doing the drum part to We Three Kings over Little Donkey. Yeah. That's weird, that is like Fatboy Slim or something, isn't it, when they mix up. No. Well, no, you're still mashing it up at the age of what, eight? Yeah. No. And that's what I'm saying. And that, is that planned. when, um, is that when, uh, someone was filming it and you could f hear your dad on the camcorder going, he looks like a twat? That's, that's the one, yeah. yeah. Oh. And that's why, maybe that's why I don't want to be on the telly, because I'll always have my dad's sort of echoing voice just saying, <laughs> he shouldn't be on there, he looks, <laughs> looks like a, 
That's it. So, so that's, that's why I'm a bit sort of nervous about this today. Really? You think it's sort of quite Freudian in a way, sort of? Yeah. You're actually just case for us, for us. Well, plus I haven't got the look. I don't- I'm not pretending, right, that mm. I should be on the telly. What's wrong know. with your look for VH1? It's not right. It's not Jono right. Jono was on VH1. Was he? Yes. So I'm going up against Jono? <laughs> so He's gone now, he's moved on. Yeah, there you go, you see. Another one who they gave a chance to, yeah. and then he was like, you know, yeah, I can do that. He's- he's built up, right? They built him up, you can do that as a job. And then they knocked him down. And he probably started eating. Well, I don't think you can <laughs> knock John over. <laughs> <laughs> he started eating! I'm look at him now. Yeah. Right, oh. so that's what I'm saying. So if it's meant to be, right, it, whoever's gonna watch this tape, you know, yeah. uh, thanks for the offer and that. But, you know, time will tell. <laughs> Very wise. So, yeah. there you go. And I tell you what, actually, go right, on. It's, it's a bit funny, cos we're looking on the web in the week at different sayings, and, uh, <laughs> do you know the saying- A round head does not an MTV presenter no, make. Yeah, no, spa- uh, what's that saying? Spa- <laughs> <laughs> spark, oh. spark in the pan or something? Hey, flash in the pan. Flash in the pan. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <coughs> yeah, that, that's a bit like what could happen to me, innit? Do you know what I mean? There I am trying to do my normal job, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then you bring me in here on a Saturday. Next thing, everyone's after me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then it doesn't work out, and yeah. I'm dropped. Yeah. And that same flash in the pan. Do you know how it came about? No. Um, do you know like how years ago they used to dig for gold? Gold. Yeah. Yeah. And they had like a little pan. Yeah. And they'd put the soil in, and they'd rub the soil. Yeah, and it shone in the now sun. Now and again, it shone in the sun, and they yeah. get all excited, and we're like, oh, brilliant, some gold. And then they realised it was just the sun flashing in the pan. Yeah. And that's, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. So again, that's a bit weird, I saw that saying in the week. Almost yeah. like a little thing saying, don't be getting carried away. Omen. So, well, it makes you wonder. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Not really. So, so tell you, things that make you wonder, you saw Darren Brown, what did he do? Darren oh Brown, no, no, extraordinary! Yeah, I told him, but I said, uh, um, you should uh, peep. To, a lot of people don't realise who Darren Brown is, and he's, oh, we, I think, we, the best illusionist um, in the country. We went to uh, Jonathan Ross's house um, for his birthday. I didn't. Uh, no, me, uh, uh, me and Jane, and we went there, right, and there was lots of people there, and uh, um, Darren Brown was there, and Jonathan got Darren Brown to do it, and it was incredible. He did all these tricks, right? Um, <coughs> I mean, incredible. It was just amazing, um, and he did one um, with a bloke who was there, a uh, friend of Jonathan's. I think his name was um, Ray, and. Uh, he got him to give the pack. He said, "Count the cards," and he counted out fifty-two, 52 cards. Yeah. yeah. Went, yeah. He went. Think of any card in that pack. He didn't touch it yet. He's counted fifty-two. It, it was in his hand. He said, "Think of any card." He said, "What was it?" He said, three of spades or something." He went, "Find it in the pack." Couldn't find it. He said, "Count the cards." There was fifty-one. Right, and he couldn't find the card, and he had no idea. And we forgot about it. He went, "Oh, it's gone wrong," and he forgot about it. He, and he kept. So he was going, "I wonder where that card is," and he kept looking at it. I found out that about a week ago, Ray went into hospital with an appendicitis, yeah, and the surgeon was really so this, there was somewhat crumpled up, there was a th thing, and it was a card, it was the card that was in his thing causing appendicitis, and when he came out of surgery, there was a card from Darren Brown saying, was that your card? That's amazing, don't you think? I mean, this that's like little, incredible. This is thing and what, and then a crab went, I know what it is, it's a five of spades. <laughs> It's another wind up. Yeah. Yeah, well, see. <laughs> see, I'm not gonna believe anything anymore. But that's so if, I was, if I ever. You've learned a lesson. <laughs> yeah, but say, say if all this goes wrong now, right? Cry wolf and all that. Yeah. Imagine I get dropped by MTV. <laughs> see, that been asked yet. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> uh, right, they're short on firemen because they're always going on strike. <laughs> I answer the phone, it's you saying my house is on fire. I don't know what you're talking about now, Carl. You I actually- <laughs> I don't know what he's talking no, about. Hang on, I think somewhere along the line there, <laughs> Carl has been recruited by the fire brigade. <laughs> Did you leave that bit out in the story? Start again. Yeah, right. That's what right, I'm because saying. I just wound you up about crabs, babies pushing their way out of vaginas, yeah. and Darren Brown calling the pencil. Right, yeah. Little, uh, What's what's the saying about uh, little acorns little, don't little, gather any ground? Cry, uh, cry wolf. You yeah. can take a fish to water and you can't you make it. Well, do you know you know that saying? Um, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Do you know why? Um, because its neck's too long. No, what? It's got an awkward neck. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's correct. That is correct. Right. Anyway, well we've still got to come. Uh, right, it's Carl. been bad today. I'm going to apologise to people listening today because you might as well be focused. Do you, do you know? Do you, have you heard the thing that got us Rolling Stone gathers no moss? Yeah. You wear that? Yeah. Do you know what that's from? Uh, during where, where it's from? In Woodstock, 
right, the band used to go out and get this sort of like moss that used to grow there and it was sort of like slightly hallucinogenic, right? And they used to come back and they used to all go out, like, everyone was out there, mamas and papas were doing it, um, the doors, they all came back. But Mick Jagger and Keith Richards would never do it. But they'd smoke other people's. Yeah. A Rolling Stone never gathers his own moth. <laughs> that was what it was. Well, seriously, Carl! Right, that's so the truth! we've still got to come. Uh, <laughs> Rockbusters. Have you heard the saying, a fish in time saves nine? The, s the clues were- Have you heard that? That'll never get off the ground. <laughs> LZ. You've got- Have you heard that saying, out of the frying pan into the saucepan? <laughs> You've Have also you got- that? <laughs> uh, oh. I'm oh. trying to hold it together now. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. No, we're trying to teach you something, Carl. Yeah, but you're not. Why? Because at least my stuff that I tell you, if you go in into a pub and told someone- What? what? There was a blind girl, she hit her head, she could see. What's that? Well, just don't- don't get down if your eyes are bad. <laughs> <laughs> right, with- No, go round headbutting right, thing. Play the tune, Carl. Play oh, Carl, come on. <laughs> <laughs> The Undertones, Teenage Kicks, that's one of the tracks on the uh, best air guitar album in the world ever, Volume 2, which is one of the prizes on today's Rockbusters. And John Peel's favourite track John ever. John Peel's favourite song of all time. And, uh, so, Carl, have you got the answers for Rockbusters this week? Yeah, we have, yeah. We've got, uh, <laughs> the first clue. <laughs> You're upset, so Carl. miserable. I I'm a bit fed up today. The weather's- I knew when I was walking in today, though, that I'd be- But that video, there's lots of- there's lots of weather on that video, so they can- whoever wins this can go home and see sort of the weather you were talking about. <laughs> uh, the first one was, that'll never get off the ground. Uh, LZ. Yeah. The answer there was Led Zeppelin. So easy. Um, yeah, but I said that's here. There's always two easy ones and a difficult one. Go on. The third one was, you'll get a load of bacon off them. Go on. That was L. Uh, Long Pigs. Right. Yeah, and then the second one was uh, that woman's got her husband's gloves and a pair of her own. Yeah, H H. Yeah, yeah, that was Ermin Zermitz. <laughs> 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 so that's that's the three that's the three answers. I'm sure well, I'd like to winner. give the prize this week. Ermin Zermitz. What? There's a lot of Zermitz. That is genius, Carl. That is genius. Oh, her man, her mate. So There's so many people who are worthy of the um <laughs> of the prizes, obviously. <laughs> I'd quite like to give the prize this week to um Tom <laughs> McGibbon. <laughs> Just because I like his name, I, I don't know if I've pronounced that right, but Tom McGibbon. Yeah. I like to give that to no, him. No, you shouldn't laugh at Tom's name. Because uh, he also lives in Bloxhall Road. <laughs> I don't know why I find that. <laughs> Tom McGibbon of Bloxhall Road. I don't know why. Well, you've made a mockery of, you've made a monkey of the man. Uh, poor, uh, poor old Gibbo. Yeah. yeah. And he's asking that, he's got a question there. What? Um, can Carl get rid of slugs? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm almost certain he can. Just so well, well known to, um, if, to, if, uh, if he's been listening, if he was listening a few months ago, he would have known how to. Go on. Because I told you what slugs like. What? Getting in letterboxes. <laughs> How does that get rid of them? Put some stamps in your garden. <laughs> <laughs> they like, uh, no, they like, they like stamp glue. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, and how does, that help? how does that get rid of them? They keep coming back, won't they? Well, then you go, I can't trying. believe it. We'd have to climb those boxes now. There's a fellow leaving well, stamps just out give for it a us. Go. You've won some prizes and I've sorted you. No, <laughs> how does that get rid of slugs? Leaving stamps out for them, their favourite food. Because the- It's like planting a load of lettuces, they love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends where he's got them. I thought he meant he's got them in his house. Okay. So, oh, to put know. stamps on the outside. They go, there's loads of stamps out here, lads. Let's leave this house. Right, so- Let's get out of this house. We've got, uh, we've got one more- Go on. Uh, educating Ricky to- Go on, on quick then. I need, I need educating. Right. Uh, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. How was he gonna outwit Darren Brown? You said something in the break. Oh, I have to say, yeah, um, Darren Brown, who, uh, we bumped into as well, and he did this incredible trick where he puts 40 pounds down on the table. He says, I can tell you which hand you've got a pound coin in, uh, let's say five times out of five, you know, so I have a, a pound coin in one hand, I put it behind my back, I bring my hands out, and he can tell me every single time which hand it's in by asking questions, by doing various things. Well, he doesn't ask, but he just goes, no, you might have written that one, you might do the same again, but then you're an intelligent person, you're probably not with it, he goes, so it's in that one, and he does it every time, yeah, five minutes, it's incredible. It's absolutely majestic. Oh, and I, I mentioned this to Carl. Yeah. And, well, Carl, you tell me how you think you could outwit Darren Brown. Because well, your dad used to do this trick, you well, told me. My dad used to play this. Yeah. Um. How old were you? Uh, I don't know, probably about ten. So you probably weren't as sharp as you were now, then. Uh, uh so he used to play it, and, and the way of telling what Andy's got it in, his hand looks bigger. So that's all you've got to do. <laughs> that's how he did it, then! Yeah. That's so how to Darren catch Darren out. So ca no, to catch it was Darren out- a bit different, because he did it with golf balls, but- <laughs> But to catch it. Darren out- <laughs> Carl told me, Rick- He did it with a spud! To catch Darren out- Yeah. The hand which hasn't got the coin in, 
Just make it slightly bigger. <laughs> just make it just like extend it slightly so it's slightly larger and that'll catch Darren out. You'll never be able to <laughs> so stop that's that. that's how he did it. Or you just put, put a pound in each hand okay. and wind him up. Just go, no, you're wrong. You, yeah. are, you are brilliant, Carl. Yeah. Do this one. Do you, d do you, uh, did your dad used to do the one where he takes your nose off, <laughs> off of your face and puts it between his fingers? Did, did you, you did you keep going for doctors? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go on. Right. You know how that's done. You know he's not actually taking your nose off. It's his off. thumb. Go it on. It is his thumb. Last on. one. Yeah. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rash out. It's been a mess today, <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> what do you mean it's been a mess? It's been a mess. What has? This. What? The show? Yeah. How has it been any worse? It's just all over the place. There's no sort of, it's not tight. It's not tight like it normally is. Um, <laughs> and she'll be going away with this, thinking that's what the show would be like. She listens to the show. She knows it's a shambles every week. Go on. Yeah. Uh, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Yeah. Do you know the saying, ham it up? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, go on, yeah. yeah. Right, well, do you know what it means? Well, it means to overact. Right. Well, Years ago, w with uh, with actors in musicals and stuff, mm. they'd, um, the actors used to look pretty ill on, on the stage because they didn't have proper makeup and that. Right, right. So what they used to do uh, uh, to make themselves look rub their face in pigs. Well, they got they got bacon, mm. rubbed it on the face, mm. and it made the face a bit sticky because of all the like you know the pig fat and bit of lard and stuff like that. Mm. And then they'd go and get some bricks, bricks, yeah, mm -hmm. house bricks rub them together, make some sort of red dust from the brick mm. and then put the dust on the face mm. and the, the fat and the lard and that would make the dust stick mm. to the face mm. and um, they'd look well under the lights and that's that's where the they'd same- They'd smell great as well. Yeah, well- Lovely, everyone likes to smell of bacon. Mm. No, but so that's that's the old uh, ham it up, that's I where like it that. comes from. I'm, you know, if, if it's true, I've start, I've no reason to think that it's not. So that's your third educating Ricky today. So, what have you learnt? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely got, sod all. You've got your hamming it up. Yeah. Um, rams are gay. They, they know which ones are gay now. <laughs> now! <laughs> and, uh, At the, last, the, thank fella, God. the fella who can hand read, um, an arse. <laughs> <laughs> if you miss the rest of the show, <laughs> what are you gonna make of that? <laughs> <laughs> you just tuned in. <laughs> you are a maniac, Carl. So. And you've had your screen test. I reckon we'll be seeing you on MTV or VH1 in the near future. How uh, much is it? How much? I mean, she can't answer. What do you reckon I'll get? Because I've, I've, you see, the annoying thing is, I've just bought a flat in London. Yeah. In central London. Yeah. MTV's in Camden. Yeah. I wouldn't have bought in central London if I'd have known <laughs> I'd had to go there. <laughs> that was to make my life easier so I could walk to work. So now I've got to go out of my way. So I need to <laughs> cover that. <laughs> <laughs> to be truthful, I'm not sure that the MTV gig is a certainty yet. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's pretending she's not sure, but she can't wait to sign me up. Yeah, I reckon you'd, you know, you, uh, maybe start off with a few little interstitials, just like you know, what do you think, make of that, or Carl says, and, you know, a few of them. I reckon you make a, you know, a few but has grand. It, wh why has it got to be music? There's why can't music. it be? I think that idea on the animals is good. I can do film stuff. I can talk about films. <laughs> Elephant <laughs> Man, love that. So Go on then, do a film review, quickly. Right, uh, right, well today on, uh, film review, we're doing, uh, classic films, um, and today we're looking at, uh, Elephant Man, John Merrick, one of his, one of his better pieces of work. Um, it's a sad film, I, I, I've never really been able to watch it all the way through. <laughs> Sorry, uh, John Merrick's better piece of work was him being the Elephant Man, played by John Hurt. Yeah. Go on then. Um, sad film, uh, when I was younger. Tell us a bit about it. What I is it about? It's who's about John a fella. It's about yeah, a fella who's yeah, got a funny head. Right. Tell us this. And, um, you know, he lives in, uh, I think he lives in London, in like the, about in the 1930s or something like that. And he's being picked on all the time and stuff. Mm. And, um, first time you watch it, you'll probably cry a bit. And then the second time you watch it, you're just sort of thinking, God, that would be bad. Sort of having a head like that being picked on all the time. And the third time you watch it, you might think, you know, oh, uh, how does he get his jumper on? <laughs> uh, then, I don't know, I'm probably bored of it the fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's well worth watching, so, uh, Elephant Man, uh, Brilliant. Yeah, see it. Brilliant. I think if you want to get on TV, Carl, you'd be better as the subject <laughs> of maybe like an omnibus <laughs> documentary. <laughs> yeah. Living with Carl. <laughs>
<laughs> or maybe one of those uh, appeals in Comic Relief. It doesn't oh, all go oh. to the people abroad, you know. There's some people in this country that need our help. <laughs> yes. See you later. What is it? That's the Libertines. Time for heroes. Oh, yeah. So, Carl, what, what a great day. Carl, he's done his, uh, screen test. That's going back to, uh, MTV now, to look the big wigs to have a look at. Shouldn't mention wigs. Um, <laughs> we've had, uh, Rockbusters. We've had, uh, Educating Ricky. We had Educating Carl. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Clary next week, so. Yeah. But Rock you'll be back for the big Christmas, uh, Christmas spectacular. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's that. I've not been happy today. Go on, um, why? If someone's listened for the first time today, it's, it is normally better than this. It's not. No, it is. It is. No, I don't think it is. So, no. uh, so I, really, I really don't think it is. So that's that then. So I'll see you in... Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah.